here's a sample late arm progression for, for those of you whose arm is not at least 45 degrees of external rotation at landing. So you want the arm to be in a position to uh, accept layback at the point at which the trunk begins to rotate. And this is something that a lot of pitchers commonly do struggle with. First and foremost, when we do an assessment, we wanna make sure that the arm actually has the mobility to flip up and get into these uh, positions with good timing. So one of the common areas that we see uh, is a limitation throughout the pec. And so this is a pec barbell smash wrapping a crossball with a voodoo band around a barbell and laying on your back, working through that range of motion. Once you can get to the point where you have about 20 pounds, uh, so two 10 pound plates on that collar of the barbell, and you can kind of move around, uh, really no pain or sensitivity in that point. The second option here is a pec doorway stretch. You can either use this as a stretch where you're doing 10, 20, 30 second holds and then actively trying to pull yourself deeper into the position and then actually lift off. Or you can do it where you're just doing two to three second holds and you're doing it more as a pre-throwing feels drill. Where you're trying to feel what it's like to have the arm on time as the trunk begins to rotate. So you can do it in both ways. Here's one sample T-spine rotation uh, movement. Take a half kneeling position up against a wall and you're basically tracing a windmill position uh, with the left arm. Then you're also gonna do the same thing uh, with the right arm as well. So again, just addressing the T-spine uh, rotation, there's a million different ways to, to do that. Here's just one sample. This is the lasso drill with the torso stacked, front side closed, arm up, and then having them rotate from there, rotating, uh, starting from the pelvis, allowing the energy to flow up through the upper half and allow the arm to be just pulled through. Uh, using a slightly heavier than normal ball weight here can help exaggerate that feel. Again, the point is not necessarily to get the arm fully to 90 degrees of external rotation at landing, but exaggerating it in this drill can help them feel kind of what the end goal is uh, for this entire progression. What you'll see here, we call this attention tentos tentos throw. The camera is not in slow motion here. He's actually just slowing everything down and making sure before the front side goes, he feels that form vertical. He feels the arm up on time. Then he allows the front side to go. So once you kind of repattern that, that's really the hardest part here for a lot of guys. Then you can start going 20% speed, 30% speed, 40% speed, and grooving that new timing of when the arm's up, that's when the front side goes. This is the figure eight rocker drill. You've probably seen this before, but we're incorporating a little bit of a figure eight preload pattern with the throwing arm from a rocker position. Again, this is just going to help you feel the arm float up and back in a fluid and relaxed way. And it's gonna help drive you into a little bit better timing and a little bit deeper position. So this is a good one from a scap retraction or scap loading uh, standpoint as well. Don't progress from this movement until you've you know, gotten the arm on time and it, it sinks up. If you immediately jump to adding every single drill here and throwing out every delivery and, and trying to imagine it'll transfer on day one, that's usually not how it works. You might need to spend a couple of weeks working on the first couple of drills here before you add in the next drill. So this would be the leg lift rocker. The point here is try to keep the same tempo, leg lift height, and everything else that you will be using in your normal game or mound mechanics. Along the theme of adding layers of complexity, once you can do that on flat ground, adding the leg lift rocker off the mound. Once you can do this with good timing, you're very, very close to actually transferring that to your full delivery. So the final step would be throwing out of your full delivery. If you're gonna do this, it can help be helpful to start just doing this into a net 10, 20, 30 feet in front of the mound before you add in a catcher, before you add in standard hitters, before you start throwing off speed. Again, just going on with the theme of adding layers of complexity, making sure that you've got the timing down before you move on to the next progression. All in all, just some ideas for improving your late arm timing. Hopefully this gave you guys some ideas to go and implement with your players or go implement directly uh, you know, in your own routines. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.